Now, if you're as old as me, you may remember a few years back, just, just one or two years ago, there was a joke flying around about Skodas. What do you call a Skoda with a sunroof? A skip. And that was because back then Skoda were a bargain basement brand. Fast forward to today and things are just a little bit different. Somehow. So gone are the bargain basement days for Skoda, however they do give us value for money still, and none more so than probably one of their biggest sellers, the Octavia. Now I've got an estate version here because, well, I want one, and I'm going to drive a VRS version later on because, well, why not? Now before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, and you can keep up to date on all the reviews that we've got coming up. Right. Let's take a closer look at this Octavia estate. Now Skoda currently offer a good range of engines, so let's see if I can get all these right. We've got a 1 litre and a 1.5 litre petrol engine. These two also come as mild hybrids. You've got a 2 litre TSI petrol engine as well. If you prefer diesel, we've got the 2 litre TDIs with 116 brake horsepower, 150 brake horsepower, or you've got the 200 brake VRS engine. Now, depending on which engine you go for, you can have a six speed manual gearbox or the seven speed automatic DSG. I think it's fair to say that Skoda have got you covered. Now, I think it's fair to say that with estate cars, it's not easy to make them look amazing because of the size and shape. However, I think Skoda have pulled this off incredibly well. This 2019 model looks fantastic, but with a few subtle changes and some slightly sharper styling, the newer versions look even better. At the front, we've got this black grille with vents. Looks really nice, looks really cool, LED lights. I think the front end looks brilliant. Moving around the side, and this is where things tend to go a little bit awry when it comes to estate cars. However, once again, Skoda have nailed it. I think it looks fantastic from the side. We've got body colored, Wing mirrors with integrated in, integrated indicators. That's easy for you to say. These particular wheels are the base wheel, base trim, but you can upgrade those and Skoda offers some great options when it comes to the wheels. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to estate cars, it's all about how much you can carry. Well, we've got a fantastic boot, which we'll get to in a second. On top, we've got these roof bars. So I could put my bike, the kids' bikes on here. You could even get a storage box. If you happen to want to take your entire wardrobe with you, then you can get a storage box on top for, for extra luggage space. Let's move around to the boot. Now, around the back of the car, there's not a great deal going on at the back, to be fair. It's fairly clean, fairly simple. The newer versions, the styling around here, it's not as rounded off, it's a little bit sharper, looks quite nice, but I don't think this looks bad at all. But inside, which let's face it, that's what you want to see. Let's say, for a little bit of context, professional cycling. Okay, these cars are used for the support vehicles for professional cycling teams. And the reason for that is they can fit four, five, six bikes on them. All the spares, all the tools, clothes, food, you name it. Anything that the riders may need for a long day in the saddle all goes in or on one of these cars. Now, if they can fit all that in here, then there's more than enough room for you and your family. So that's fantastic. This particular one has got a nice boot liner. So some options do come with a boot liner or you've got the carpet at the back. If you don't want the boot liner, we've got a spare wheel in this one. However, that is an extra. So you will have to pay for that. And we've got a nice boot cover that I can't get back, there we go. Okay, there's a nice little option here as well. If it comes to putting the seats down, rather than walking around the back, pressing the buttons and going, you've got a nice trigger here, which just releases the seats, away they go. And if this wasn't enough room already, you've now got acres of space. And let's see if they fall flat. Not quite flat, there is a lip here at the back. Um, so you're not going to slide anything in with ease, but let's face it, what are you going to need to put in there that you need an absolutely flat space? I mean, it's, it's huge is this, it's absolutely huge. I think we need to go take a look inside the cabin, let's have a look. In the back, I mean, <laughs> there's absolutely acres of space. 
I mean, if I'm honest, they could probably afford to lose a little space here and improve the space in the back, which, let's face it, that doesn't need improving, but I mean, it's just, the whole car is huge. It is absolutely massive. There's not a great deal going on in terms of technology. We've got, we have got, we can operate the windows from here and we have got air conditioning uh, in the back. We've got, let's have a look, ooh, bonus. Brucey bonus, we've got some cup holders in the back and we do have access, let me put that up. Well, that's a bit tricky to get. So, to get into the boot from here, you've got to pull this down, pull the lever, but you then need to close this up and pull it down again. You can get to the boot, which is okay, I guess. Um, that's nice, that's nice. Moving into the middle seat. <laughs> There's just so much room, it's unbelievable. It really is. Wow, let's see what it's like in the front. Jumping into the front and the theme of having loads of space continues once again. I feel like I can just relax and enjoy the driving experience, which is brilliant. Steering wheel is comfortable to hold. We have got some controls on there for voice command, volume. You can control your menu. It has pre-programmable, that's tough to say, pre-programmable profiles. Try saying that when you're drunk. Um, hopefully not while driving. Pre-programmable profile, so you can set your radio and all your information up, set your name on it, you can select that profile and everything's as you need it. If somebody else gets in the car, they can set their own profile and things will be as they need them. So that's, that's pretty cool, is that, to be fair. Infotainment system, it's a touchscreen, it's a good size and it's very responsive. It does work really, really well. We've not got sat-nav on this particular model, but it is an option for, for higher trims and higher spec levels. DAB radio, phone, media, voice, app, car. It's got everything you need. Climate control is separate, so again, you can adjust that on the fly without having to faff around with the touch screen whilst driving. Now, this is a DSG automatic gearbox. We've got a gear stick on this model. This is a 2019 model, as I said. Um, the newer versions have little switches and I think they're quite plasticky. I'm not gonna lie, they're not very nice. They're not very nice. I think a gear stick, it just feels better. Um, so that's a better option on this slightly older model, but hey ho, if you want a gear stick, you may need to opt for a manual. We've got two cup holders. They're not very deep. They're not very deep at all. If you go for the tallest of the takeaway coffees, I'd be a bit wary about those falling over there or knocking them over but there you go we've got a storage compartment in the middle and we've got fairly decent sized door pockets all in all this is a nice nice comfortable cabin i think for the money that you pay for these skoda really are offering exceptional value for money if you think about the fact that you could pay thirty thousand plus for a fiesta or a corsa then when you consider that you can get one of these an estate large estate with a good engine for around £25,000 brand new I think that is exceptional now if you want to save some money upgrade the trim click on the link above visit the website visit one of our stores give us a call someone would be happy to help you out and just maybe you could find a great car at a great price I'm going to take this for a drive somehow now this is the 1.5 litre petrol engine we're just stopping at some traffic lights now i'm going to set off from these lights i'm not going to launch it i'm just going to set off under normal driving conditions and see how it accelerates away from these lights once they change <sighs> come on there we go it's beautiful it's a way uh, Usually you get a bit of lag with the automatics and you, you ain't got it on this, it just moves. And it's smooth through the gears as it goes up, as you accelerate. Those gear changes, you barely notice them. They just, it just, bump, bump, bump. There we go, we've done. We're up to speed and it's very smooth. And yet another set of traffic lights. Let's have a listen for cabin noise. There's a little bit going on here. You can hear the wind a little bit, but I had to listen for that. It's a nice, quiet interior, smooth ride. Wow! Woo -hoo. A 
that wagon just pulled out on the car in front, didn't stop for the corner, nearly tipped over. Parcel and freight solutions. Be lucky if your parcel gets there if he's driving. Anyway, back to it. Let's take it around the smaller roads now. Let's, let's go through town and just see how it handles the corners, being an estate, being a large car. Let's see what it's like around town. One thing I'm not too keen on is in order to change drive modes, you've got a button down at the bottom, but then it brings it up on the screen. Bear in mind you're concentrating on driving, so then you can't take your eyes on. By the time you get a chance to look at the screen, it's gone again. So you have to press the button, it's there. I'm gonna put it in eco mode got there in the end and we'll see what it feels like in eco mode oh, this road is awful for potholes and the cars eating them up so smooth oh it's even better when you hit the smoother tarmac the car takes these corners really really well i mean you wouldn't think you were driving such a large estate car it feels so beautiful to drive at I've wanted one of these for a while and I'm driving this now, I'm just falling more and more in love with it. I really do want one of these cars. My wife doesn't fancy driving a longer car but I, I genuinely believe if I could get her into this to have a test drive, she would find it so nice to drive. I mean... <laughs> Those speed bumps are ludicrous. They are so sharp and so heavy, and it just, it's not an issue in this car. We just go over it, lovely. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, you bump around, it's a speed bump, that's what's, what's gonna happen, but I didn't jolt like I do in my car. I've got an Astra at home, and I, when I hit the, those speed bumps, the car jolts, I get a thud. You just don't get that in this, it's beautiful. We hit the dual carriageway now, let's accelerate from 30 miles an hour, we'll hit the floor, there's no lag, there's no excessive revving. We've hit 70 miles an hour. That was extremely smooth. This is a 1.5 litre petrol that had no lag in it. There was no, it didn't need any extra rump. It did what it needed to do. I imagine if you load the car up, it would still be okay. Maybe in the one litre engine, maybe it would take, well, it would take a little bit longer. But I don't think it's going to be that bad because Skoda have very good engines. However, if you hit that dual carriageway with the two litre petrol, even fully loaded, I imagine the car is going to shift. It's going to be up to speed in next to no time. I don't think you're going to be lacking in power with the two litre. But this 1.5, it, it's nice. It, it, I would take this this engine any day of the week I really want this I do but I think it's time to put it away now and jump in the VRS and let's see how that handles so this is the 2 litre TDI Octavia Estate VRS model We've got 184 brake horsepower in this car and let's just put it to the test from a standing start like we did with the last car and see what the difference is. Weirdly there's a slightly longer delay, fraction longer delay when you put your foot down however when it does kick in it definitely moves a lot faster than the 1.5. And as I exit this roundabout onto the dual carriageway, let's see, and it just takes off beautifully. So we're looking at the drive modes. Let's leave it in sport because let's face it, it's a VRS and that's what we want to test. So if I just tap the accelerator, the car's itching to go. It, the 30 brake horsepower seems to make a huge difference to be fair in this car. And if you fully load this up, you're definitely not going to be short of power. If you are a lover of hot hatches, but it's time to settle down, you've started a family and you need something with more practicality and a lot more space, then the VRS Octavia Estate is a fantastic choice. I mean, I put my foot down there onto the dual carriageway and... <laughs> 
Now, undoubtedly, 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 without a doubt, if you are looking for the ultimate control, then you will probably want a manual gearbox. However, this automatic gearbox isn't too shabby at all. Um, from a standing start, if you floor it, there's a you lose a bit of traction. It, it kicks in quite quite sharply, so you need to be a little more refined with the accelerator initially. But when it does kick in and it's got traction, the car just shifts beautifully. And off we go. And there we go. As long as you're careful on that initial acceleration, don't lose the traction and you're away. And <laughs> it's a joy to drive. It really is. I definitely do not feel like this is an estate car. The suspension is quite stiff when it's in sport mode, as is the steering. We're going over the rumble strips. <laughs> so, the Octavia Estate VRS is an absolutely fantastic car to drive. It just moves. Absolutely superb.